Here comes Heidi testing out my scooter to see if she likes one with suspension or not. She's going slow. <laughs> what have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Uh, good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Uh, yeah, I was yeah, almost a good, a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are uh, getting ready to go do laundry. And why would we do laundry at this time of day? Well, it's because... It's only 105. It's only 105 today. We're, are, we unfortunately screwed up with our air conditioner and we it got down to 70, or it's 78 inside. And we had to pull our awning in because the winds are 16 miles an hour plus. And that's a little bit too much. Uh, it's weird. Oh, they look, today's the day they water the tree, hon. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, the, there's, a, there's a hole over here. Can you see it? It's a, like a bubbling brook. Can you see that right there? So anyways, they just turn them on randomly. Boy, it's windy today, though. I mean, I knew it was 16 mile an hour winds, but wow. Uh, we got to get the laundry cart out of here so we're not carrying the laundry over. And I don't know. What do you think about it? I mean, it's 105. Yeah. Do you want to grab that side? It's hot, but it's not sweaty hot. I don't know. It's... I, I, it's weird yeah because i think that if it was 105 in florida which we've been in before we've had heat um, index what was that heat index 115 it was very high i don't know if it was that high but it was very high when uh, we were in north I fort myers you sweat right away yeah well yeah but, yeah yeah but here um i'm not saying that you wouldn't sweat at some point yeah but i could sit out here and it's nice that it's breezy. Yeah. It's but, uh, a, now, don't get me wrong. You guys are seeing all this wind. This wind is warm. Uh, there is no... This is not a cool breeze on any level. This is like... Uh, the best way I can describe it... Yeah, this is the best way I can describe it. So your vehicle's been sitting out in the sun all day long. Remind me I get to open that back window on the cap. Uh, so your vehicle's been sitting out in the sun all day long. And you open up the door... And that heat that comes out, that's what this breeze feels like. It feels this like morning, just a real hot breeze. This morning it was 82 degrees out with a, a not a, maybe 10. Well, so was last night, remember? Yeah. When we put the and awning it, in. It felt cool. Oh, this yeah. Morning. Yeah, I know it was 80 last night. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the wind, we can't put our, I mean, we had our awning out. I don't trust, when we get above 13, 14, I can do 14 for just a short period of time if I'm close to the RV. But when we're up to 16 and it's 16 miles an hour for hours and hours and hours and hours, I don't, I need to bring the awning in. I need, I, I can't, I just don't trust it. I mean, it really starts jerking around. Uh, and I'll be honest, I hate this power awning compared to the old Dometic A&E awning that we used to have on our Terry camper because that old that old awning when you put it down and you locked it up and it did have a center support arm also if you guys remember it's been watching us for a little while um when we tied it down to the ground it handled it i mean it could handle wind everything it jerked the whole that little rv would get rocked hard by that 18 foot awning um this one here is so flimsy i just i don't trust it but you can do this if you guys don't know um, there's there's no reason you can't put your awning out half the way um, or part the way. So we do this to keep shade as much as we can on the RV. But as you can see, this whole concrete slab, it's just hot. I should get the... That's what it'll do. Let's get the temperature gauge out. <laughs> so I had to spray this thing with uh, compressed air. Um, so what I did is I, I let the, it drip. I let it drip that cold Freon stuff on here to freeze it. That AH means that it's ambient high, but I froze it so much that it said low. Okay, so I think I've got this now. So here's this side of the truck here. 97 degrees. 
Yeah. But if you look on the bumper here in the sun, <laughs> 130. So let's see what this concrete is because we came out here in our bare feet and that wasn't fun. It's 122. <laughs> Well, I think they just transfer heat faster. I don't know if they're any hotter than... Yeah, they're 117, huh? So the concrete's 122. Yikes. It's pretty darn warm. Yeah, let's see what the temperatures on the tires are. Let's, let's these tires are... Yeah, we should. 138. And now you guys are saying, well, why don't you have it covered up? Well, it's because the awning's normally out, and we have a shade out, but not today. So, fun in the sun. It's pretty hot out, but I don't know. I Would you rather deal with this or it being 30 degrees out? 30. Just plain 30. That's not even very cold. Would you rather it be 30 degrees to the point where you have to take precautions for the, the freezing all the stuff? And, oh, hey, there's something. You know, we're worried about all that freezing and that. Check this out. Let the water run a little bit. This will be funny. This is the cold water. Just the cold water. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to see this. We'll try it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the cold water is 91 degrees. <laughs> By now, you guys seen our video with us installing these windows so far so good um i i want to point this out though because i don't want you guys to be um oh i don't know what i want to say i don't want you guys to be disappointed with something that i recommend and this is the only disappointment look i again to put down the blind put up the blind you gotta you gotta open the door and separate the screen it's the only way that works even with that You've got to slide this thing pretty straight on. If you try to just pull this lever down, it don't move. Um, same with putting it up. It don't move. So you've got to, like, put your thumb underneath of it and touch it and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way that it works. So, all right, let's go uh, do laundry. Oh, it's definitely not 10 o'clock. They need to fix their clock. Um, site, Heidi had already showed you this on uh, the last video, I believe. And... It's actually cool in here. When I say cool, what do you think? 80. It's about 80. It's not, but it's not bad. It was probably and the, uh, the, again, off season camping, one of the benefits. Now, if it was real busy in here, we could go out there and use those. And there's washers out there. And I still think we should try to utilize those clothes lines because the humidity is so low and it's so hot that it'd probably be nothing for it to, uh, um, you know, jump up and dry off everything almost immediately. <laughs> oh, well, I can't. Why'd you give this to me? It says right here, babies and children, keep it away. I'm going to suffocate now. <laughs> Where's the trash? I think it's outside. Okay. Pretty sure it is. Oh, and I was waiting to read the new Bonnie Leon to love anew. <laughs> they do have uh, door codes for this. Where's the trash? There's no trash out here, Hyde. Oh, yeah, there is. See, I keep on telling her, but she don't listen to me. Isn't it funny? They don't need a lid on this and it stays dry. So again, washers, wash basins. Oh, we got a little Gojo station too. And I think, even though she hasn't said anything to me, Heidi put on her swimsuit. She got some kind of a, it's like a surf suit. And uh, I have a feeling that the reason is I think she wants to go dip in the pool, which that's up to her. I'm not dipping in the pool today. I don't think it's warm enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> But I like the idea that this place is probably pretty darn busy in the winter. Because um, we got talking with the guy that put the skylight on our RV. And he said that in the winter, 
uh, when they're you know normal capacity 90,000 more people are in Yuma Arizona 90,000 so of course quartzite's even more than that but 90,000 in a city that that makes a big difference Ooh, so we got some jet action going on somewhere over there they like said there's Yuma International Airport over there so there's pretty big jets that come flying through Heidi's getting her swim on oh they got water exercises cool so how hot is it in the pool it's not hot at all so is it just comfortable yeah so whenever you go into the shade, does it get more cool? Not really. On my face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On my face. They don't have the uh, filter. every day because my shoulder hurts. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that would help. So they must have the filter turned off because I ran the skimmer around the net or whatever you want to call it picked up a bunch of little leaves and stuff but there's still a lot in there but it's clean overall and Heidi's got it all to herself I bet you the hot tub's hot oh it's got stuff in it too yeah you hear these jets it's be nice to have like that one right there you can use pool every day There's a lot of nice big airplanes to go flying through here. So that's it. You're finished? Maybe. Uh, maybe. All right, well. We'll probably get like 15 minutes left. Okay. On the All right. Well, I'm going to sit down and drink some water. Well, Heidi and I went and had lunch at the Mexican restaurant. That was good. We rode our scooters over to Albertson. Or she rode her bike. I rode my scooter. Over to Albertson to get some some uh groceries for uh well we had some groceries delivered but we hit, we were forgetting some stuff so anyways we have the back window open the reason that i'm pointing this out is just give you an idea of what you can expect in somewhere like yuma arizona in the late springtime uh i don't know what's the date today may what yeah, May May something. Yep, 29th. May 29th, you can see the current temperature is 99 degrees, and it's pretty much been like that almost every day. Anywhere from 93 to 99. We've got a few hundred days coming up here. I think we had 100 the other day. Because we have these solar windows, um, the double pane windows that we paid extra for, I can say that they, they help. They definitely help. When we have the blinds down, it helps even more. A little bit later in the day, I'll go ahead and lower the, the blinds uh, to make sure the sun don't come in. Of course, having our awning out on this side definitely helps. But I'm going to show you that it's not like we're uncomfortable or anything here. Um, it's 70 degrees in here. 38% humidity, actually 69 by that measurement. And then in the bedroom, I think that one, yeah, that one's 68 degrees in there. So, yes, we have both rooftop air conditioners running on high. Uh, we did block the uh, the skylight in the bathroom because, you know, we can. And it uh, helps out. I mean, it, it's not bad. I mean... We hear a lot of people say, oh my God, you definitely don't want to be down there in the summer. But, I mean, it, it, granted, we could still get to 112, 115 degrees down here, up to 120 degrees. But we have a whole stretch of 100 degree days and if we're outside in the shade, it's not bad. It's, I mean, it's- I noticed that like people walk in the park late at night, yeah. like after 11. But even as soon as the sun goes down it gets very comfortable outside it's very nice it's it's in the 80s yeah but it's very comfortable last night when we were working on the window it was very pleasant yeah i mean i don't think we 
we weren't we were hot but we weren't sweating like right. if we went out there and did that right now <laughs> yeah right so that's something that we have to do is the other window of course we'll wait until later and again this other work that needs to be done on the uh, RV oh I meant to tell you uh, there was there was a few different repairs that we've had to do on the RV um, you know this axle that's kind of a big deal uh, the, the bumpy roads in Louisiana caused that axle failure I'm sure of that um, like I said there was a couple of bumps that we hit it's like what is that I mean they were like ramps it was just crazy I, I I don't even know what uh, anyways I'm not gonna get back on that one again <laughs> but also um, the bouncing down the road uh, even though this has those torsion axles which ride considerably smooth um, or smoother than leaf spring that I've dealt with in the past the sewer support the dump valve support bracket which is nothing more than a piece of strap metal that actually broke so I gotta I gotta fix that and uh, of course we're gonna fix the axle um, and then the skylight that was a recall thing with uh, with Forest River so um, I can't really count that as a repair that's something they already knew um, other than that what other kind of repairs have we done oh since we've got on the small, road uh, like the shower handle came off one day but it didn't break yeah oh um, and I had to uh, repair, you know, repair that PEX yeah. that was in the uh, in the water bay, I guess you could say, or that water door. That all needs redone. Yeah, that, it, that was poorly done, but nonetheless, I, I had to make that repair. I had to put a new piece of PEX clamp on there. And, and that was one of the days in the afternoon that we were about froze to death. Yeah, wasn't that funny? <laughs> we were in Ohio freezing our butts off doing that repair now I wouldn't want to do that repair until well about this time of day because there's a shadow that's right. on that side of the RV but as far as repairs you know we've got quite a bit of mileage on there um, what did we figure out since we had the RV about 8,000 miles yeah so uh, approximately 8,000 miles is what we've towed this RV and uh, yeah it's pretty Pretty minor, nothing, yeah, nothing I crazy. I can't think of anything. Uh, we may have got a few scratches and stuff. We, like, one of the doors don't stay shut, so now we put a fly swatter down through it. <laughs> um, but it's not. It, oh, our door broke. Uh, oh, the, the drawer. this drawer, right? I, From we bouncing. Have so many cans. We got. This is where all our canned goods are. If you want to look here. And we bounced this so hard going down the road the that out. the bottom fell out. So we repaired that. That was just uh, uh, some staples and Gorilla Glue. That which was $60 that we had to buy because we didn't have a stapler anymore. We, it's because we gave away that tool to our daughter. So now we have. We had to buy another one. Yeah. And basically, if you guys want to know what that is, because you may want it for yourself. Actually, you need to have one. Yeah, I'm almost positive that Heidi's right. It's a good idea to have one, and it's it's a power staple. Let me rephrase that. It's a stapler, but it also does not only heavy-duty staples, but it also does little finishing nails, little brad nails, um, or I'm sorry, just nails, finish nails. So, good idea to get that and have Gorilla Glue on hand and Gorilla Tape. Yes. And also have. Um, uh, a turn -a bond definitely have a turn -a bond tape because we use that on the skylight to get us to this point um, it should have been repaired in Orlando I believe that's about the time we should have repaired it and that was back in December January December December, December. so that a turn -a bonds held us off that that long I had to go up and redo it again because I did it wrong the first time but after a period of time but yeah so those are the things I'd say definitely keep with you. But we want to show you that 99 degrees outside, it should mean that, and they always say it, and I still think this is true. If you are 99 degrees outside, you should only be able to drop the inside temperature 20 degrees from what it is outside. And that puts us at 79. However, we're lower than that which is really good 
again, we have both rooftop airs running on high. And of, of course, like I said, this, this RV is insulated pretty darn well. Um, the shade with the awning, that helps a lot. And a lot of these RVs down here, if you're going to be down here for a period of time, definitely want to put skirting all the way around, even on your slides. Because as I was working on the uh, video that you guys will eventually see, I was sitting in the slide and I moved something that was on the floor. I have kind of a pillow down there. I don't know how to describe it. It's a foot pillow. It's a foot rest. I moved it out of the way and you could feel the heat that was being radiated from the rocks underneath the slide up into the bottom of the slide. So yeah, there's, there's definitely ways to stay cool down here and shade is like the number one. If we have that awning in and we go outside, that, that, that whole patio area is nothing but a, a hot rock. I don't think you could cook on it necessarily. You think you could cook on it? Nah, probably not. I think there's two, our truck would obscure it. It doesn't see sun long Maybe enough. Maybe I'll put some aluminum foil out there and try to fry an egg. Uh, is it next yeah. weekend? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. It'll be back there on the site behind us yeah. because that, well, no, there's a tree there. Well, no, that should see sun all day long. Now, something else that we watched videos a long time ago, when we were first getting into RVs, um, we watched a video about these solar cookers that people had. I told Honey, I said, there ain't no way that thing's gonna work. It just no way. Listen, out here, uh, yeah, I say for sure, definitely out here. And of course, in other hot climates, you know, other, not only temperature hot, but a lot of sun. And of course, we have no rain in the forecast at all which we shouldn't because this month only averages one day of rain for the entire month. I think there's only like four days of rain for the whole year. Yeah, there's <laughs> not very much. It would be a nice place to stay except it gets a little cool in the winter. Yeah. And, I, and I miss the fact that like, hey, let's go to the beach. Yeah. Well, eh, we can't, I mean, I don't know how far we'd have to drive to get to the beach, California, I guess. Um, the other thing that I find about this area while we're on that topic, Everybody seems to be really polite and they keep to themselves. So they're, I'm not saying they're friendly, but they're polite. So when you see them, I, I don't know, I can stand outside for an example today at the grocery store. Heidi went in to get uh, some, some, some watermelon and some other stuff. And while she was in there, I stood outside and people walked by me the whole time. Not one single person waved, said hello, nothing. Not none of that at all. Now, with that said, everywhere we go, when we're riding our bikes, everything, people are waving, they're waving to us on, they're, they're polite. Uh, at the restaurants, they're very polite. Everybody's polite. At the stores, they're polite. They wanna help you. I mean, it's, it's, it's odd because Again, they're not overly friendly, but when they do interact with you, they're very polite. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sit down and watch some TV here. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to another lovely day in uh, sunny Arizona. Um, today's gonna be what, 100 and what? Four, five. 100, 105. Actually, yeah. <laughs> it was three, four, and then they changed it to five. So 105, I think tomorrow's gonna be 107. And we're having some work done on the RV. Remember I talked about my skylight on the RV and the disrepair that it was at um, with a leak uh, that formed due to a recall that they have, which is getting taken care of at my expense because, like you know, the dealers aren't always the best to uh, be relying on to get work done at their leisure. So, as we move up the ladder here, this is John, and John's with Foothills RV Repair. How's it going? <laughs> John's been doing this for years and years. He was telling us that his father used to have a business that stood where that building is currently at. And when he was younger, uh, they used to come over here and make repairs back in the 90s? Yeah, 80s and 90s. The 80s and 90s, wow. Mostly 80s. That, it opened in 1980 right there. No kidding. Yeah. So, so glad that I'm having a professional do this because I would have done it wrong. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, this self-leveling sealant that's on the roof from the factory. 
and he says it's basically something other than Dicor from what he can tell or at least a different consistency and that the last thing you want to do is go peeling all of it off uh, trying to rip that membrane yeah the, the rubber just can't handle it so you you peel off what you need to only to put in the new skylight so thank god he's here because you guys know how anal i am i probably would have tried to get it back down to pure canvas like he had mentioned and screwed up the the membrane for sure so that's why you hire a professional I don't always DIY everything, although you guys still will see me do the axle. <laughs> That'll be fun just because it's going to be humorous, me manhandling that thing around. So, I see something else I'm going to have to do, which we already knew. This stupid uh, screw cover plastic is cracking and breaking, and it's, it's, it's bad on these RVs. This stuff don't last very long. I already patched the front. Looks like i got to do it above the awning, too. But, yep. Yeah, we're uh, one of those things that I wanted to tell you guys don't always try to do everything yourself especially if it's a little bit maybe dangerous being on the roof early in the morning because I'd have to do it in the morning or in the uh, afternoon I mean what we just said it's gonna be 105 today and sometimes you might be a little tired in the evening and the lights getting dim or in the morning might be a little unsure yourself if you haven't got your coffee and good chance you can fall off your roof so even the professionals do. He was telling us that one of the other repair guys fell off the roof of, a, of an RV. So it's getting fixed and thank God that we've got the time to be able to spend to have somebody do it. Okay guys, so it's a little bit noisy up here, but I wanted to let you see what was done. Oh, there's a little bubble here. Little bubble with this stuff. I wanted you to see what was done and it's still curing yeah the new skylight's in you can see the butyl uh, that is underneath here it's a liquid butyl that is good he did a really good job up here nice very nice i'm definitely happy uh this is finished we do have a problem with the track on our awning though check take a look here it's separating and coming apart in a bunch of places so I'm gonna have to take a look at that real quick and I don't like the fact that our awning dips in the middle here either and it has to do with the tension on it just weird the way they set those up. I, I remember there being screws on the ends. That's what I did with mine, but oh well. Good afternoon, YouTube, and it's barely afternoon. And what do you do on a day that it's only going to be 97? <laughs> you work. You get some work done. Uh, it's only 93 right now, but it's going to be 97 today. So we started working at 10? About 10, yeah. So it's been a couple hours, a little over a couple hours and we're making progress on making room so we're downsizing can you believe it again all the people that said we need to downsize again um we didn't do it because of you we did it because um it's been a year since we lived in the rv and we already or we have been going through stuff inside through the pass through through the truck and he's going to show you exactly what we're getting rid of. Yeah, except for the clothes, which I don't know where they are. You got? Yeah, to, oh, I guess we will. Bag. So first of all, let it, let me tell you that with just the stuff that we have kind of close here, uh, we're talking over 200 pounds worth of stuff. Considering what we still have in the RV that we got to bring out, and all the stuff out here, not as much the weight, which it's nice to have less weight, obviously, but uh, size. Look at. We're getting rid of all three of those totes, and we now, want, you know, they're, they're odds and ends totes. They're good. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, there's stuff in the totes, but also we have an empty tote now, which will be nice for organizing the last little bit. We were kidding around, Heidi and I. We were saying, what's that in front of the, the truck that's gray and, and as wide as the bed? Haven't, haven't seen that in a while. Anyways, it's the front of the truck, obviously. It's the truck bed. Of course, um, we're still not in any position that we need to uh, connect the water pump 
and uh, the water tote yet. That might be this month or next month. Yeah, we don't know. We we don't know. But um, yeah, organizing and downsizing. Uh, we got a bag for Heidi Scooter to make it a little bit easier to move around. And we'll put the word out now, not that you, this is not going to work. I'm going to tell you right now, 90% sure that it's not going to work, but I'll still mention it. Heidi and I have come to the decision we are getting rid of our electric bikes. We're going to sell the Rad Rover 5, and we're selling her Rad City Step Through 3. At this point, after we had the work done, there's nothing wrong with them. There might be some scratches here and no there. reason we are getting rid of them is the time it takes us to, to put them back in, get them back out, put them back in, um, secure them. It's, it's too much of our time. I really like my bike. I like it. Oh, I like my bike too. I, when it's all put together, yeah. sitting out, not needing locked up right. or covered up for the night. Right. I, 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 I mean, love it. If we get other bikes, we're still going to have to lock them up. But we'll, we'll talk about that down the road. But right. anyway, uh, these bikes are awesome. They're not awesome for our situation. Yeah, yeah. And it's basically because we have to take those front tires off. And you see what we got to do to get them in here. And then you can see how much space they take. They literally take up, when we have a tote in the back, um, they take up half of the bed. They take up from here over for us to, to secure them. And, and it's too much for, you know, it is transportation. But anyways, we're getting off topic. So if anybody's interested, uh, you can send us a message. But we're not shipping them. We're not yeah. driving anywhere to deliver them. Mm -hmm. If we're on the road and we put up a video and we're saying, hey, we're in this area. Listen, if you're trying to, if you're interested in them, just tell us where you're at and we tell you where we're going to be at. But I'm going to tell you that if you're in Pennsylvania, uh, it ain't anytime soon. If it's in Maryland, it ain't anytime soon. And Florida, we're not hauling these around till winter. We're not being back to winter, to Florida, to the winter. Okay, there's one thing. And again, same holds true for this too. We made a corporate decision here, didn't we? Corporate decision uh, that we're getting rid of something that is obsolete, that is the most cool camping thing that we have owned for years. And this is our portable picnic table canopy. It clamps to the picnic table and provides shade. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look in my old videos and um i did a review on this um it's under uh um flashback videos so go back to my flashback videos or if you want to go to the playlist and look at review items camping items something like that it's in there if you're a thousand trails or an encore or an rpi a lot of thousand trails you get picnic tables but most of the encores you don't yeah and so we, we even when we have picnic tables right we found that most of the campgrounds that we have been at, we have not had a picnic table. Right, that's exactly right. That's why my painting isn't done yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the nice thing about it is this is like 20 some pounds just by itself. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do, this chair here, um, it's our love seat. We've had this love seat since 1994, I think, three or four, I think 94. And it's been on every beach that we've ever been to, except for one. Jensen? Uh, Jensen. Yeah, we didn't take it to Jensen Beach. We got our chairs. Yep. And the thing is, is it's just getting old. So this is going in the trash. We're just throwing it in the trash. Yep. Um, it's still, I mean, I could still, at my weight, get on it, sit on it, move around on it, lay on it, jump on it, whatever. And it's still holding. It's just, it's old. It's part of the downsizing. Yeah, and it's heavy. And those two cheap chairs we got from Walmart or just fine. yeah do fine so um, this is some of the stuff we're throwing away uh, we got to dig through the center of that to see if we have shells and stuff yet there's a there's a cooler there's a center in the middle that is a cooler so you can put your drinks and everything in it and I think we used to put our shells in there I think we still have shells in there if I'm not mistaken so we're we're getting stuff done oh and inside the rv too okay listen the inside the rv is really really messy but let's let's show you i'm gonna show you what is an accomplishment and i want you guys to realize that this is an accomplishment even though it don't look like much all right 
Um, we have a little bit of room in here, not much. We have room here, believe it or not. This is important. This is where the toaster goes, right? Yep. Yep. We found a place to put our paper towels. They were just lounging around. And we now have a space for the induction cooker and the pans and that. All this stuff had homes, but they were mo mobile homes. <laughs> we were always moving them. We were always moving them around. It is messy, but there's room in there. You can see we still got a place to put stuff. Um, that's the most important thing. This one's a little bit tighter, but still, we got we got room to put things. This these were packed with junk. All right, here you go. Look at all that. Now these go up in there, and I still have room. And over here, look at all that. It's empty. So we have all that cabinet space. This was a, a lot of work to get here. I am getting rid of stuff that is worth lots of money. Just to let you know. Not this, we are getting rid of this, but um, you guys that went with us up to Wisconsin, we love it. We haven't used it since we left Wisconsin, so there's no sense in it. Um, we're getting rid of our portable washing machine because almost all the campgrounds we're going to, you cannot hang your clothes out to dry. Yep. So there's no sense in having a portable washing machine because the only way we can hang them to dry is in the bathroom as you see now. Uh, the other thing we're getting rid of which we're reluctantly getting rid of, but is our shredder. I just bought that shredder before we left, um, but uh, Oma and Opa, or Opa and Oma, however you want to say it, they were saying that for their junk mail, they usually have a campfire and they just burn it. Well, I don't like burning anything other than just envelopes, and there's, you know, we get like credit card offers in the mail, and when we get our new credit cards and say, you know, we're we're cutting them up and chopping them up by hand, of, even though we could throw them in there now, which we were. But there's a lot of campgrounds we've been to that you can't have fires. Either. Yeah, can't have fires, especially now. Right. Um, we're getting rid of that tripod. Um, we're getting rid of uh, that whole thing full of electronics. There's a kilowatt in there. There's LEDs. There's all kinds of crap. Clock, so, so we got to weigh that. Uh, I think though it's going to be over 200 pounds and. I'm getting rid of my audio visual stuff, um, which is an LED monitor. There's an LED light in there. Uh, it's for camera work. It's It's got its own case, all that stuff. We're getting rid of most everything to the goodwill. Um, we may keep a few things that we can pawn somewhere. Believe it or not, we're going to get rid of our American flag. It just sits in the cabinet. Yeah. Um, it, it, we had a place to mount it in our old RV. In our new RV, I have a flagpole, but it's the wrong size, and we just haven't been doing it. I'd rather put a decal up, you know. I. It'll go to. It will go take it to the goodwill, and yeah. somebody will get good use out of it. So we've got a lot of stuff that we're we're getting. Oh, we're getting rid of the five-gallon water jug, yep. our water pump, and then we've got another water pump, a manual one. Um, so again, we're just giving it the goodwill. There's we, we looked at local agencies around here thinking that we might be able to get rid of them to those, but no. All right, so now let's go back to our messy room. Um, yeah, this is, we didn't make the bed or anything, obviously. So we went through our closets and we still have too many clothes. And we still filled a garbage bag full of clothes. We're not sure 100% yet because we've been in hot weather for so long. We don't know how long it's going to take um, till we're going to start getting into our long pants and heavier shirts. Now, this is something you guys can make fun of all you want. I have way too many shirts. I think Heidi has five, things maybe five or six shirts in here at the most. All the rest is mine. Mine, mine, mine. And why do I need so many? I have no idea. So we found some room up here. Um, you can see here, oh, don't look at that. We, we seen something that says Super X. Maybe you don't know what Super X is, so we'll just pretend we didn't see it. But I got room in here. <laughs> um, we got our paperwork in here. And those cabinets are kind of empty. Well, I, I, I think. have, we have an extra set of sheets and public yes. cases. Right. 
So. But we've organized it underneath the bed. Our drawers are all done underneath there. So whenever we get everything put back together, we'll show you a tour, and that way you don't have to bitch about oh, how it's so sloppy messy. We are. Listen, we're we've been just tearing this thing apart for the last two days. Well. Day and a, no, two days. Yeah. It's been two days that we've been doing this. So that's why it's so messy. Now, as far as back here, um, there's battery chargers and stuff that are in this tote. Of course, those go with the bicycles. However, this tote will go also because we're going to put an ottoman in here that you can sit on. That's a storage ottoman. And it's going to look almost identical to that storage ottoman that I use to haul all of the computer stuff when we're traveling because that's one of the smoothest safest places for it to be so yeah what a disaster huh but we'll organized there. we're so organized i can't believe how much we've got done and how much more we've got to go but let's get we're going to pack this stuff up and get to the uh, goodwill store before they close so we'll pick this up probably another day and maybe it'll be when we're all finished all right youtube need to talk about something that we seen on the videos the other day is like 107 out so we stayed in the rv and watched youtube i don't know pretty much for a few days for for yeah for a couple days now yeah. don't get me wrong we would come out at night and we early in the morning we would do stuff um just like you've seen us with that downsizing um which we just showed you prior to this but i wanted to talk about something one of the videos that we watched I, there was a couple that um, not calling them out or anything. I think that they really had questions or they really were challenged by uh, what was going on. And I think I have answers. I could be wrong, but I think I have answers. Uh, and it's my, it's just everybody's expectations are a little bit different when it comes to what's acceptable whenever you're camping. Now, I'm not making an argument for the people that were at this Thousand Trails Park that was addressing them directly in the manners that they were. But for anybody who is at a Thousand Trails or an Encore Park and you have a problem with a neighbor, you need to go talk to the park manager, call the park manager, whatever. You do not address it with the neighbor. Vice versa. If somebody talks to you about, hey, you don't, don't park there, you need to be over there, you need to do this, you need to do that. Don't do this, don't do that. Um, it's not for you to say anything to them, it's for you to check with the park because those people don't make the rules. Regardless of what they wanna tell you, it doesn't mean anything, they don't make the rules. So that was the first thing. You wanna be a good neighbor, you wanna to talk to your neighbor, you wanna hi and you know all that stuff, but whenever there's a conflict, whenever they say something that conflicts with you, that's it. You're out of the picture at that point. Thank you. I'll take it under advisement. Okay, glad you told me that. Immediately call the park manager because these people will tell you whatever they think because hey, listen, when we were when we were younger and we rented apartments and stuff like that, we rented from a one there was an old lady downstairs and the other one we rented from an old lady. I'm going to tell you, the older you get, which we're finding out ourselves, the more you try to live through somebody else and imposing rules on them to make you feel important still. And uh, we had that experience firsthand. Um, we had one lady that was, she, she was deaf, so she would talk really loud on her phone uh, with whoever wanted to listen to her. And we could hear her downstairs and she was talking about us. And it just so happened that we were working a ton of hours and our kids were little and we were carrying in them in from the car after we picked them up at her mom's who was babysitting them that was 20 some miles away and we were carrying him into the house late at night and she was on the phone talking to her daughter i think it was about how you should have seen that little girl's feet just dangling like she was all lifeless because she's just wore out i'm sure they're not taking care of her <laughs> oh my word it's just amazing um, she also told us that we were only allowed to use so much of her garage space, which it was a double car garage. One side was ours, one side was hers, but there's a divider in the middle. And she said that we don't get that divider, that that's for her because she got a bum leg. She got to swing her door out. Well, <laughs> of course, what we did is talk to the landlord, found out that's not the case at all. So 
Uh, also, door use. She used to tell us what door we had to use. We could only use one door, but she was allowed to use either door, which was she hilarious. She used the front door. That was the door she made us use, yeah. which was so funny. But the day we were moving out and it was trick or treat, she used the front door. Yeah. which <laughs> She was in our way while we were so just going up and down. We already learned firsthand, don't listen to the people telling you mm -hmm. what to do. You have to listen to the people that make the rules or enforce the rules yeah. to tell you what's up. So this couple was talking about how the neighbor came over when they were setting up and said, you can't be this close to my property line, which listen, for all intents and purposes, that is her property line. She's renting it. That is her site. And you're going to see this as a reoccurring theme. Regardless of how much you think you should be able to do and which, still, she was just over there checking to make sure. And I'm sure it's because of not something that the couple did, but what has happened to her in the past. And that is people coming in, putting their slides over her property line, and then walking through her property, taking care of their dump and their, their cord and hooking up water and all that stuff because they have now went to the point where they can't walk under their slide or crawl under their slide and they don't want to. So that's just, you know, that's what the deal is here. She was just protecting what has happened in the past. Now, in this case, the couple was way far away from her line and it, that it didn't hold true, but she was concerned about it. And she came out while you were still hooked up, you know, still hooked up to the truck doing the movement making sure you know before you disconnect and everything saying hey i'm too far over because most people don't want to re-hook up once they're completely disconnected and set up but so, if you've been camping for a long time you pretty much yeah, know which this what, couple did what your area is right and and i see why because she had like a lot of people do in the southwest here they'll just set up these bricks as a little fence you know, and they're just stacked bricks. They're not cemented. They're not glued. They're not firmed in the ground on any level. They're just sitting there. So for somebody to knock them over, it's nothing to do. Which I think they had their RV pressure washed. And she came out and was saying something to the people doing the work of the pressure wash. And same thing. Um, you know, it's all, it's her right to make sure that they don't knock over her bricks and that there and the hoses that are being used aren't over on her property. Again, that whole thing, she rents that space. That's her space. Just like you're not supposed to walk through the space, you're not supposed to walk on the space, especially if they don't want you to, because that's her space. And listen, these sites, although some of them are more spacious than others, it's still, there's a line. There's a line that becomes their site. And usually for most parks, it's from the utility pole or the water hookup or the sewer hookup over. So if the water sewer electric is on the other side, the hookup side of our RV, this is the camp side. If it's on the other side of our RV, wherever the, the utility that's the closest is, or I'm sorry, the furthest away is, that's pretty much where the line is. So as long as your slide comes out and you don't walk over into their campsite, that's it. Now, granted, we've been at plenty of campsites that have been real close and we've had to walk through, you know, because it's just too tight. Um, you know, once the slides are in, it's just too tight. Something like here, we have a, a concrete pad. And even if we put our tires right up to the concrete pad that you're not supposed to park your RV on, if we, if we put the tires right up to the edge of the concrete pad that's right behind us here, um, our slide, once it's out, still would require us to where we'd have to walk over into their parking area. So there's always going to be exceptions. Now, they also said something about uh, their kids were innocently exploring another area of the park, a site uh, that was across from them. And they were taking pictures of the fire. Yeah, yeah, which I mean, she was sitting it's, outside. It's innocent enough. I mean, but she was but, watching them. But when it comes right down to it, I that's, get it. That's not your site. I get it. Yeah, that's not your site. That, regardless of what your kids were doing and how well you thought they were behaving and but not it also interfering, wasn't their site. it's still just it's not your site. It's not your site. Now, the people again that said something to you, that, you know, that's where I would uh, again not even addressed them. I would have called right to the, the park and say, listen, 
is it okay if my kids are exploring taking photos if they go into empty sites and you never know the park may say hmm, some of these sites even though they're empty they're being paid for and people don't want them on you know their sites whenever they're gone it's hard telling but you have to do that you have to call and find out you can't just assume hey my kids aren't doing anything wrong because just them being there might be wrong as far as the parks concerned and then the final thing they said um, was talking about their pets and and somebody yelling which they actually recorded which I thought was funny somebody ranting about um, their dogs walking through the pro again as innocent as that may seem this for example this is my site when I pay for this site or when I stay on this site in this case we're actually staying for a couple weeks free then I think we're gonna be paying for a week or two it's hard telling um, I pay for this site and the last thing I want to do regardless if you clean up after your dog or not I don't want the the odor <laughs> of dog crap in my site you know I, I don't want it and if the dog hikes his leg and he pees over that, I don't want that either. I'm out here on my bare feet right now. I don't want to walk out to wave down my food guy because I've ordered Uber Eats to have something delivered. And I'm out there and I'm like, why is my feet wet? And it's because a dog's pissed in my sight. Um, that's why. Now, I'm not saying that the dog was doing that. But honestly, if you were walking your dog and the dog was walking through their sights and the dog all of a sudden stopped and you're just enjoying it it's like oh why is the dog stop you turn around and that dog has diarrhea and it's coming out are you going to slip a glove on and catch it all <laughs> of course not and are, are you going to clean that entire area and disinfect it and everything well no i mean you could clean up their poop and i don't want to be vulgar about it but there's still always something left behind there and it's the same with the other so again i know you weren't doing that but you know you, you know those dogs could have just released at any time yeah. and you can't stop them and the fact that this lady was probably this happened to her in the past i'm assuming for her to get that crazy how does she know how does she know that that's an issue for her if it hasn't been an issue in the past and the fact that she was saying hey stay off my property with your dogs she's right you know, as far as that's concerned, I don't think you have to call anybody. That is her property. I mean, she has rented it. She's leased it. She is paying for it. She has some kind of a membership that takes care of it. Um, you know, you, you have to stay off their property. There's you just always have to be courteous. Yeah, and and again, I don't think honestly, I would love you guys as neighbors. It seems like that you're 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 taking care of things, you're, you're keeping an eye on things, you're watching your kids, you, your pets are on leashes, uh, you're looking to clean up, you're taking your pets for walks, all that stuff. It's just, it seemed like that you guys had answers or questions about that. And, and again, I think those answers are pretty evident. And that is basically, if it's not on your site and if it's not a common area, then you have to stay off of it. I mean, that's what it comes down to. It It's sad that we're in that kind of a, a thing you know but for all that we've camped all these years and of course us being full-timers for the last year now I don't um, think it really has changed I mean it it's changed from when you and I grew up right because um, I'm sure that when we were growing up campgrounds I'm sure kids run through sites yeah which they just don't do like, anymore I, I'm just like when we run through the neighbor's yard right because we all were growing up together. We were all friendly with each other. Um, it wasn't a, dis there was no dislike. Right. I mean, we go home with every neighbor, right. you know, in the neighborhood and I, it's times change and it's not like it used to be. Right. It's not like when we were growing up, we ha we actually had a path yeah, between right. a, a long path. Oh, we used to have bike paths. We yeah. used to ride through people's yards to the yeah. point where they had paths through yeah. their yard with yeah. from our bikes. We did too. But it's it's definitely one of those things, especially in the campgrounds, that the sites are kind of small and it's, you know, site, pad, parking, site, pad, parking, or worse yet, RV, pad, uh, pad for sitting like we are now. 
RV. RV pad for setting and you're parking your vehicle out on the road or or sideways or whatever so i just wanted to touch base it seemed like that they really had questions about that and why were these people screaming well they're the people are not contained enough they're actually they're they're probably contained too much but i'm saying they're not contained enough with their their ability to to hold back whatever they've got going on yeah we haven't had any issues i would have called and if we would have Hello, park yeah. ranger. Hello, camp host. Yeah. Hello, front Why office. Are we dealing with this? What's going on that I have this lady telling me that I'm not allowed to park my RV in my sight when I'm clearly in my sight? What's the problem? Yeah. Um, and, you know, hello, my kids are being scolded because they're across the street taking pictures and they're standing in an empty site. You know, you have to, because, no. I, you know, you could have called and found out that the, they said, well, I don't know what they're, you know, maybe you, oh, we have a problem with that person all the time. Just ignore her. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just ignore her. I mean, you, you could have got yeah. that answer. Yeah. Or um, it could be that they don't even know about it. And they're like, what? You got yelled at. Oh, man, we got to talk to this person. Right. You know, we don't want that to happen. And we've got people coming in and out of there all the time. I bet you everybody's getting yelled at. Because quite honestly, they want that TripAdvisor rating especially if it's 1,000 cores or on, 1,000 trails or Encore, yeah. they want that TripAdvisor rating. They want you to, they give you all kinds of stuff. Please give us ratings. And if you had a bad experience, you're going to give them a bad rating. Yeah. So they want to hear about it, I'm sure. So uh, it's, it's just, that's our two cents on it. Um, we're going to go back in, enjoy ourselves for the rest of the evening until it gets real laid out. The sun is low enough now that it's, it's not that it's uncomfortably hot, I'm not hot at all, it's really. It's warm, but, but, but it's warm. Yeah, but we, we want to get back and enjoy ourselves for a little bit and, uh, yeah, see how today goes. Um, it was it was pretty nice. productive today. Yeah, I loved it. I, I swear the, art, the the truck actually rides differently. I could could be wrong, could just be my imagination, <laughs> but it seemed like that it was a little lighter, <laughs> which it is lighter. But, yeah, we got rid of a lot of stuff. Yep. It, it felt good. It felt good. Heidi forgot one thing, though. We're going to have to yeah. bring that over there and drop it off. But, all right, we'll pick this up later. How about we record? <laughs> Why is that so funny? Because I literally just talked for about five minutes, and Heidi closed out the video as I was looking at the camera while it wasn't recording. <laughs> Um, we're going to close out the video. Uh, to give you a recap, we're in Arizona still, and we've got to stay here until we get a few things done. Look forward to that video in the future. Heidi is going to be bench pressing an axle underneath the RV for me. Sweet. And then, and then I'll put a bolt in there and maybe help her out a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we have to uh, put a new Level Mate Pro on the RV, which we have. I've got to put a new anti-rattle hitch on the uh, hitch. And uh, we're going to do all the cleanup inside here. We're going to make it a little bit nicer and cleaner. We've got so much more room, which is making us feel both better. I'll tell you, um, decluttering, uh, downsizing, but decluttering is such a rewarding feeling, um, definitely. We've been wanting to do it for a while now. Um, well, we wanted to do it, but we didn't want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't want to do the work. We didn't know what the heck we were going to do with all the stuff. Well, we took care of that. Today, Listen, so. I'm telling you, that stuff that we had, oh my. We could have put it in yard sales on Facebook Market. But if, if there was a swap meet, I'm sorry, if there was a what's flea, market. It, flea market. If there was a flea market that we would have went to, we would have made roughly... 500 bucks probably Five, yeah probably $500 on all the stuff that we just dropped off at the Goodwill which of course if you guys don't know you get online and you fill out a form and you can write that off on your taxes that is a taxable right. donation so you know it's it's good it's given back and it was it's quick and easy always so uh, that's it for now so how do you close it out as always we hope to see you out here bye